How's the girl? Very much braver. Oh, pretty sore head, Lord Mr. Apart from that, nothing much. I'll probably keep her under a day or two. Give us a name. Uh, uh, Sue's just doing a report now. Not a ton from what I can gather. How did your house to house go? Oh, marvellous. One bloke says he's going to write to you now because we haven't stopped courting couples necking in his doorway. And a woman said she definitely saw a flying saucer over Talbot's pie factory at 4 a.m. Cameras in the right place at the right time, microphones within reach but out of sight, actors knowing what to say and where to move. The right setting designed to fit the actor and leave room for the cameras. The lighting worked out for each scene. Costumes, makeup, captions, film inserts, everyone knowing what to do and when to do it so that every part fits together and builds up to become what? Track in. Well, basically to become what was at first only in the mind of the director. I think the job of television director is a very exciting one. You work with actors and designers, craftsmen of all sorts. But no production can succeed completely unless it's planned. And that's what all this is about. This is a television studio, only a small one, used for training directors. Now look, let's assume that we are talking about a drama production. All the rules would hold equally well for any other sort of program. But in the case of a drama, it must begin with the script. And of course, that probably will not be written by the director. Starting with this point, everything from there on must be under the control of the director. And the final responsibility must also be his. He must decide how he is going to bring together all these people, scenery, cameras and lights to work properly. And he must plan his production to gather all this raw material into the studio at the right time and in the right way. Now almost the first thing that any director will be called upon to plan will be to decide what sets he needs in the studio and working with the designer, roughly what they should be like. I think everyone knows what a television script looks like. But perhaps not all of us are familiar with what a television studio plan is. This is a studio plan. Now with this, a director can often communicate as much, sometimes more, to his technicians than he can with the script. This is the space in which the program is going to be created. It's the plan of the actual studio he's going to work in. As you see, it's divided up with lines like longitude and latitude on a map, and for very much the same reasons, so that one can pinpoint any spot on the studio floor with a reference number. All around the walls, it has printed on it various symbols, each representing a piece of information that the director may need to know when planning the studio sets. Technical equipment is kept here, so one must leave enough room to move it in and out. Makeup and wardrobe are also marked so that one will know where to place one's sets if a quick change of costume or makeup is needed. All across the studio there are barrels or bars on which are hung the studio lights. These are shown by T-shapes, showing the end of every battle. The double T's represent travelling hooks between which scenery may be hung. Of course, the floor plan can only be used as a means of communication between the director and other people after the designer has gone to work filling this great empty space. And what does the plan represent? Well, it represents this. This is a complete studio, and in it are all the sets that were discussed and agreed between director and designer. Now, what is missing are the cameras, the booms, all the other gadgetry that the director must have to present his play to the public in pictures and sound. And, of course, in doing so, he must make use of all available space. Let's take one set at a time. Let's have a look at the pub. Now, the director puts his cameras on the scene to get the shots he's looking for. Say, a pedestal there, a motorised, and a large crane. Well, after a while, this looks a bit crowded, so he decides to put the cranes onto another set. So, and on the pub, to use three simple pedestal cameras. One right, one left, and one centre. And for sound, one boom only is necessary. Now, during this scene, he wants to be able to crab this camera left to take in the door right, and that seems to work very well. 
He also wants to be able to pull back with a centre camera to get a long shot of the pub. And that also works very well. So these cameras here seem to fit very nicely. Meanwhile, on the other set, these cameras are ready in position. And of course, we can augment them with one more pedestal camera on the other set during the scene. All along, the director is making sure that the camera cables are plugged in such a way that no one camera will run over the cable of the other. Of course, all this could quite easily be worked out on a plan. So that you can see them better, let's use some of these large wooden cameras. Camera one, a crane, position one. You draw it there and you mark it 1A. Somewhere in London, probably miles away from the studios, the BBC has hired a large empty hall. And here, with rehearsal props and furniture, the actors begin to learn their moves, and the director starts to bring the play to life. A few days later, the studio technicians have watched a run-through, the final camera plan and camera script have been produced, the actors are polishing their performances, and the last outside rehearsal is taking place. Uh, do you recognize or uh, think you recognize that picture, it's Mrs. It's Hinkle? Mrs. Hinkle, 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 They've done their phones all without the scoopies, you know. Yeah, we do meet them. No, I've, I've not been of that. I'm not of that persuasion myself, personally. You don't do a bad job, by and large. They can't eat the rest. Not at all, love. Credit where credit's due. Hey, I say, uh, I think, how's that girl going on, then? Fraser. Oh, she's a bashed up so much shocking. Well, she's not too bad, then. Oh, no, love, no. Personally, I wouldn't give a monkey for her chances. You didn't see her lying there like what I did. Oh, poor girl. You? Who's at the hospital? Well, I should be. Just got back. Uh -huh. How is the girl? Uh, Miss Fraser? Oh, I've got a pretty sure head according to Sue. Although he's not too bad. They'll probably keep her in a dare shift. Did you give us anything? Uh, Sue's just doing a report now. Not a ton as far as I can gather. How'd your house to house go? Oh, marvellous. One bloke said he's going to write to you now because we haven't stopped courting couples necking in his doorway. And a woman informed me that she had definitely seen a flying saucer over Talbot's pie factory at 4 a.m. Yeah, not a blind peep about Nuttall's job. No, no one. Dozens of people going by. Seven o'clock in the evening, must all be wearing ruddy blinkers. Ah, probably just want to get home and get their bellies fed. Can't blame them that time, eh? Todd having an enjoy with the healing woman? <laughs> I doubt it. She's a talker. Mm, one of them, eh? I bet you five bob she can't see straight. Oh, you're just a short-sighted pessimist, Tom. You want? Sure. Right, well, I'm a short-sighted pessimist with five bob in my pocket. Out of the drill hall and into the studio. But it's still a rehearsal. This time for the technicians as well. Right, David, can we come on to this next scene, please? Joss and yeah. uh, Jane, please, in position. Uh, you're here. Shot 19, two shot on oh, camera yeah. five. That's about it. Joss, uh, you're here, right? Um, sort of here. Yeah, fine, you said this room off. You. Stand by. You get it. And cue Mrs. Heaney. Did you ever see such a, a horrible sight in all your bones? Do you recognize her? Think you recognize her? Camera three on the book, that's it. And as he goes down, taps the book as he will in a minute, we cut to three. Cut. Pull out to three shot and over to your right, three. Couldn't say we're winning, could you? Oh. Well, I'll have another book, she's then, eh, shall I? I don't think there's very much point, really. Mind you, the Zemmers don't hold with helping think scuppers, you know. Coming to one. Right, hold it a minute. Hold it. Hold it, hold it. Camera one's not quite there. Come in a bit earlier than that one, if you can get over from the other set. Single of Todd. MCU on a, an eight. Could Joss just take his look at her for, um, we do meet him occasionally. The look for we do meet him occasionally. Just, just hold the book for a minute. You can get a touch further left, can you, one? We're nearly getting to the room now. Just an inch more. That's it. And cue him. And cue. 
We do meet him occasionally. No, I've never been of that persuasion personally myself. You don't do a bad job at Camera all. Camera five that next on, on Joss. Not at all. As he moves. Twenty-three. Hey, how's that girl going on? Well, I should have moved. I should have moved. Please move earlier. Should have gone the museum. Yep. Just go back to uh, uh, middle sorry. of the previous shot. Point. Probably move over there. Never been in that persuasion. Yeah. We start from there again. Now, you would... No, I've never been in that persuasion personally, myself. You don't do a bad job at all, by and large. That's very kind of you to say so. Not at all, love. Credit where it's due. Hey, how's that girl going on? Miss Fraser. Oh, that's not so much shocking to you. No, there. she's not too bad. Oh, no. 24? No. That's it. For Craning down, pass on to her, now, please. Poor girl. We're a little late on it, but that's the idea, going down in onto her. Is that car in your way, Jeff? No. All right. You're quite close to it. Right, let's just try that again, please. Yeah, tell you where. Uh, all right, Jeff? Camera five. Okay. Shot 23. Stand by. Kind of you to say so. Ready? And cue. And cue. That's kind of you to say so. One next. Oh, the towel looks pretty, but it's two. Hey, how's that girl going? Miss Fraser. Oh, she looks so much shocking to you. Oh, I don't think she's too bad. Touch. Oh, no, no, no. Track in. Just moving itself, I would have been a for her chances. You didn't see her lying there like what I did. <sighs> Poor girl. Cue and cut to the other scene. That's 25. it? Right. That's that scene. We'll go on to the next scene. Shot 25, please. Camera 3. Yeah, OK. That's uh, John coming in, right where you well, are now. This is... Um, Scene two, shot 23. Please come in. Okay? Okay, Jimmy? Stand by. Okay, stand by then. Here we go. And cue him. Who's at the hospital, Bert? Oh, shoot, Parkins, B. Just got back. A sore head, as far as I can gather. Pardon, that, not too bad. I'll right, hold it. There. Hold it. Can I just go back on that and do that crabbing in? You'll have to get further in, please. I want to go back on that, please, the crab. Just once more, that shot. So we go back on this. That was genuine. Okay. Genuine. 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 Oh, she's getting a report now. Not a tongue from what I can gather. How did your house to house go? Cut. Oh, Twenty-two. Single. Oh, that's it. The ground stopped calling couples licking in his doorway. Not quite so tight. Three, three, three out a little bit. Twenty-seven. Two nine. Peaked from knuckles, eh? No one. Twenty-eight. Three nine. Four nine. Three nine. Four nine. Twenty-nine. Tell him the name. Bit further left, Paul. Probably only driving the heavy one. Right, hold it a sec. Just hold it a sec. John, yeah. is it possible for that board there, thing with the burglar alarm lights, to light up? Yes, it could be. We're just talking about the board at the back. Okay, fine. Thank back. Uh huh. How is the girl? What, Miss Fraser? Oh, uh, pretty sore head, according to Sue. Apart from that, nothing much. There's something keeping her in breath there, too. You don't get anything from her. Uh, Sue's just done a report. No, not a ton from what I can gather. How did your uh, host to host go then? Oh, marvellous. One bloke says he's going to report us to you now because we haven't stopped courting couples necking in his doorway. And a woman told me that she definitely saw a flying saucer over Talbot's Pie Factory at 4 a.m. Cut. And not a plane hit from Nuggles, eh? No one. Cut. 28. 7 o'clock in the evening, it must all be men running blinkers. 29. Cut. 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 Crab left, Paul. Can't get in any joy from the Heaney woman. What? The Heaney woman? No, she's a talker. Oh, one of those. I can't form what's the betting she can't see straight either. Runty K. Short seated pessimist dog. I'll bet you five bob she can't, you want? Sure. Well, I'm a short sighted pessimist with five bob in her pocket. Cut. On film Good. one minute twenty. On film, David. Uh, we're on film now, Julia, for one minute twenty seconds. Hey, you are running. I get ya. Knock your flaming unconscious, I will, you little heathen! 